Sheffield has changed massively since its industrial heyday and has changed massively since I moved here in the 1990s. And in fact, it's going through yet another change. Cities constantly morph and change. And we're going to look at how those changes can be good for the environment. The change you saw on the previous slide, along with several others, has led to an improvement in the quality of the River Don. Recently, otters have returned to the river, and salmon too. One of the things that we can look at when we talk about urban change is how we move around the city. Sheffield has what's called an Integrated Transport System, or ITS. All this is, is how the different forms of transport link together. The aim is to encourage people to use public transport instead of cars to reduce traffic congestion and pollution. Sheffield's integrated transport system has got several hubs where those different forms of transport meet. Think about the area around the train station with the bus and coach station opposite and super tram passing close by. Think about that. You'll also see the car parking facilities there and the taxi ranks. So there are so many different forms of transport linking together at that one point. A key example of Sheffield's uh, integrated transport system is Supertram. It's what we call a light rapid transit system or a light rail system. And Sheffield has 29 kilometres of track for this system that was to replace the trams that we used to have a long time ago. Supertram peaked at about 15 million users, although at the moment it's around about 11 million passengers per year, with a quarter of those passengers giving up their cars to use the Supertram. Supertram now links all the way out to Rotherham, it links to Meadow Hall, and of course it links to the city centre. And so many people have got the option of using a clean form of transport rather than their polluting cars. Another key example of an integrated transport system is out at Meadowhall. The transport exchange at Meadowhall has got a park and ride system where you park in Meadowhall car park and can then pay for bus tickets. You've also got a link by tram and you've got a link by train as well. So you have all of those in one place just opposite Meadowhall. And with Meadowhall being so close to the M1, it means that people don't have to bring their cars into the city centre. Another way the city's changing is that it's becoming greener. Sheffield is already one of the greenest cities in Europe. Green as in the amount of green space. With 4.5 million trees in the city, there are more trees per person than any other city in Europe. There are 250 public parks and a third of Sheffield is within the Peak District. It's the only city in the country that is partly within a national park meaning that 60% of Sheffield is green space. So it doesn't mean that we're necessarily environmentally green. It doesn't mean that we recycle more or pollute less. But with all that green space, it offers huge opportunities. Outdoor recreation creates £50 million annually for the local economy. And 1,600 full-time jobs rely purely on that outdoor sector. So it is a big contribution to the city. But our green spaces are increasing. The rivers through Sheffield used to be culverted. That means that they were enclosed with walls either side and often roofs over the top. So it was like a tunnel for the river to go through. More recently, some of those culverts have been opened up and pocket parks have been created along the river. This gives a wildlife a home and it gives people a chance to enjoy a green space in the heart of the city with the river running through it. And Sheffield's grey to green project is a really good thing for you to know about, partly because it covers two topics. Here you can see part of the grey to green project and you can see how large planted areas have been created. This obviously greens the city. So it's an example of urban greening, but it's also a sustainable urban drainage system to prevent flooding. What happens is that the roads are reduced in size. 
This has dual benefits. It creates the space for these green areas, but it also means that there's less room on the roads. Traffic moves more slowly and fewer people will use the roads, which means they're more likely to use public transport. Those large areas that are created next to the roads are dug out and filled with soil and gravel. And plants are put in. The plants have many benefits. They look beautiful, of course, to start off with. They also reduce flooding. They intercept the rainwater and transpiration means that they take water out of the ground and prevent it getting to the rivers. They also create a home for wildlife. Because water flows slowly through these swales, as they're called, it gets to the river more slowly and it stops flooding. It also purifies the water. The water, as it passes through the soil and gravel, has the pollutants taken out of it that might have mixed in with the rainwater as it washes over the road surface. So the Greater Green Project is an example of urban greening, and so are the pocket parks. This already green city is getting greener and greener, with phase two of the Greater Green Project coming online soon. So the area of the specification that we're looking at is how urban change has created opportunities. You could look at the social and economic opportunities or the environmental opportunities. In social and economic, we might look at the opportunities from the cultural mix of the city, how people from different parts of the world have come to the city and brought those opportunities with them. We could look at recreation and entertainment. Sheffield is the outdoor city. There are huge opportunities within sport and we have internationally renowned theatres. You could look at employment as an opportunity and how those employment opportunities have changed. So perhaps you could be thinking about things like um, the proposed expansion to Meadow Hall and how that would create more jobs in retail and entertainment. Or perhaps you could look at the cultural industries quarter in Sheffield or some other area. And don't forget, of course, the um, AMRC. And then there are integrated transport systems. How do they create opportunities for people to get around the city and to move in and out of the city? And then the environmental aspect. How has that urban change led to urban greening, for example? Create yourself a mind map looking at how these changes have led to opportunities.